When Martin asked us to take you on this journey, we had no idea that the Belongel estuary was in such bad shape, and we were really surprised to find that this story of the Belongel applies to most of Australia's coastline. There are about 4 million hectares of estuarine catchments along our coast that have been disturbed, which can produce deadly acid. And on this journey, we're going to meet the people who are working to solve this major national problem. In Byron, they're combining the two problems of sewage and acid to fix each other. Come check it out. sulfate soils. When we start putting drains through it, we start creating the acid coming out of oxidised acid sulfate soils. Probably the best thing is actually to return the natural hydrology. These areas have been deeply drained. The farmers probably don't need these drains to be as deep. If they weren't as deep, the water would stay on the floodplain longer, the subsoil would be wetter, and there'd be less acid produced. There would also be less transport of the product out in a quick rush. A combination of those things would result in less fish kills. Lots of people in this catchment are very supportive that it goes back to wetland. It might be better for the system, it might be better for the birds and the frogs and the fish and everything else. By putting the landscape back to natural hydrology, you're actually putting it back as fish habitat as well. Having more natural wetlands uh, up and down the coast contributing like they should contribute to the creeks and river systems, that makes a big difference to estuarine productivity, fish catchers, tourism. So. You've got to count in all those things, and if we can get our natural hydrology back, we're much better off. And we're getting there. I'm Chrissy from New South Wales Agriculture. I'm an acid sulphate soil extension officer for the far north coast. Groundwater management is a key way of managing acid sulphate soil. This land has a fairly high acid sulphate soil risk. It's around about a metre below the surface. 
So it's pretty important land to manage the best way that we can drop boards or in drain water control structures just help to maintain that groundwater level in the drain and that's really where most of the acid discharge comes from it's the groundwater that's entering the drainage system so what we're trying to do is return to as near a natural water regime as possible <laughs> trees that we're planting. Wow, wow. beautiful. The, it's magnificent in here, isn't it? Yeah. And th these trees are about 10 years old and they're very densely planted because we want to maximise transpiration, the amount of water that they pump out of the ground. One of the important aims of our project is to get rid of water. So these trees are biological pumps and these trees during a hot dry day will pump up to say 170,000 litres per hectare in a day which wow. is a pretty big whack of That's our effluent. Wow. This stuff that accumulates here is peat. That's about 50% carbon. Wow, it looks so rich. It's uh, very biologically active but these trees will actually suck carbon out of the air and pump it into the ground in long-term sinks. So that's going to help us with our greenhouse effect yeah. too. When you drain the land, one of the problems is the peat layer can catch on fire and there have been some very serious peat fires around here in Byron Bay. And that only occurs when you drain the land. And the unfortunate part of this is that all that carbon that's been locked up from this gradual accumulation of leaf matter gets released very quickly so we're basically releasing all that carbon back into the atmosphere so it's important we don't continue to burn these peat layers. Mm. Now our effluent reuse project of course we're going to be keeping the water tables high. Melaleuca trees were here originally so we're replacing the ecosystem which was originally there mm. and they're also wastewater treatment mm. systems. Mm. So they clean the water and they also pump the water out. They're multifunctional. They sure are and we get all these spin-offs such as habitat improvements and mm. pumping the carbon back into the soil and uh, or just picnic places. Once these are planted we just let it do its own thing. We just feed them the effluent and uh, <laughs> that's about it. We've got plenty wow. of that. <laughs> we do, we do. But fortunately they love the effluent these trees. Right. If you can get the trees into the ground and make sure they get enough contact with the soil and water, it's going to take a lot to knock them back. Mm. And during the hot dry weather, when effluent is most damaging in aquatic ecosystems, these trees will be transpiring the, the great majority mm. of the water that we apply on. So that means it won't be going down the drains and won't be causing those downstream issues. What we have here is a groundwater level monitor. We have them set to log every 10 minutes throughout the planted and unplanted areas. So it gives us a very accurate record of the water table. We've got lots of problems around this area with acid sulfate soils and uh, this drain tends to get quite acid at times which can lead to all sorts of nasty things for the aquatic life that lives in here and the swamp forests play a really important part in filtering the water yep. um, They actually act like kidneys Wow. to the rivers and creeks and they take up a lot of the nutrients and they also settle out uh, a lot of the sediments and basically just act like a cleanser to the waterway and um, not only that but it's just a We dug the thing down to sea level and uh, we um, we've looked after it ever since. Since we dug it, we dried the country out. The ground is now more flood prone than it ever was. Plus the fact that peat fires have been through and the ground subsided courtesy of the loss of the material. They just didn't know what was going to happen. We need to do something to 
make sure that we don't cause any more problems for fish. And I can understand to put in drop boards and change the shape of your drains. While you've got potential acid sulfate oil kept wet, it's not a problem. station that was installed for the environmental impact statement for the sewage treatment plant upstream here okay. and uh, this was part of the process of monitoring the flows uh, from the catchment, flows from the sewage treatment plant and uh, upgrading it. The problem started when they put the drains in probably 60 years ago. Wow. Agriculture and the construction of the drains created the predominant acid sulphate problem and the scheme that's been put forward here was really fabulous. They're looking at the using the effluent in a productive way managing acid sulphate soil and actually regenerating the natural wetland that was there 100 years ago and all the time we hear from the community they want to reuse effluent so mm -hmm. this is a really wet climate and the challenge here is to reuse effluent in a sustainable way even if council has to buy the land here we think that this scheme is really for future community all the way up and down the coast <laughs> strongly iron stained water with the flocks, the very low DO, the very low pHs, they are facts and we've got a good water quality data set that demonstrate that this is what's going on in the catchment. There's very fragile environments close to the coast and we've seen much of our very valuable wetlands destroyed over the last couple of centuries and we now know that there is a very very close link between the health of our estuaries, which is the nursery of our fish stock, and the quality of the catchment, particularly in the context of valuable Melaleuca wetlands. If this project is successful and we see the regeneration of 25 hectares into a beautiful Melaleuca wetland, then that may be a model project that can be used elsewhere up and down the east coast, particularly in the context of acid sulfate soil.